let's move to our last presenter, uh, uh, Eric Barber Jurudo. He's from Philippines. Uh, I would like to request him to present his paper uh, on the significance of the compulsory rest day of the bond talks in Mount Province in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. Eric Barber Jurodo is the director of the University of Santo Thomas Center for Conservation of Cultural Property and the Environment in the Tropics and faculty of the Graduate School Cultural Heritage Studies Program. Uh, I must appreciate all of our other presenters. They, they, they are quite uh, successful in finishing their paper in, in the given time as we have dedicated 15 minutes for each of the presenters. So we are on time, I think. And now, uh, now our last presenter, Eric. Eric, you are most welcome to present your presentation. Thank you very much, Zaifur. Uh, I'd like to thank the HCUP and the UNESCO Bangkok for this uh, very interesting activity or the webinar on uh, intangible cultural heritage and living heritage. So I'd like to welcome the online audience and with this presentation entitled The Air, Pingao, The Significance of Compulsory Rest Day of the Bon Talks in Mountain Province in the Philippines in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. Defining the contours of intangible cultural heritage has been problematic even uh, before the adoption of the UNESCO 2003 Intangible Cultural Heritage Convention. Tensions between Western and Eastern philosophies, nature and culture, outstanding and the ordinary quality surfaced in the heritage conservation field. Eventually a definition was forged and became operational. That's the definition you have on screen. And this definition along with the five domains have been continuously contested and criticized. ICH has been characterized as follows. It's traditional, contemporary and living at the same time. It's inclusive and representative and it's community based. These attributes are diametrically polarized with World Heritage Site features, which have always been considered as traditional, exclusive, of outstanding universal value, and of authorized heritage listing. The organic character of ICH underscores the fact that it changes, it morphs into many iterations and mutations. It is very fluid that history is just a source of, create, of credible information. It is a fusion of cultures that authenticity becomes inapplicable and insignificant. Living heritage is an expression of an intangible heritage that is enduring, evolving, exemplifying, emitting. It is a life force. It's also a life source of the community for stability and sustainability. In the Philippines, we have 175 ethno-linguistic groups that cradles a wealth of indigenous knowledge and expressions. ICH tradition and expression is very much evident in the Bon Talks in the Mountain Province. The Air Tingao is one highly contextualized practice that emerges as an integral experience for a specific construct. The main objective of the study is to establish the significance of the Air and Tingao of the Bon Talks in the context of COVID-19. To achieve this, it's fundamental to characterize the Te Air Tingao tradition in different contexts discuss how the tradition was practiced in the recent COVID lockdown, and to reflect on the Bontok values of survival and resilience during the pandemic context. This accidental research attempts to document the significance of this practice in the context of a pandemic. Popularly known as a compulsory rest day, it's practiced as an adjunct to a specific activity. For the Bontoks, it was quietly instituted as a tradition as an attached activity to a whole quarantine directive. The Eren Tingao resonates the liminal phenomenon. Studies of Van Genev and Turner highlighted the value of interstitial moments. This is an interim phase, a breather in between events. For the practice, the studies of Reid and Prilbret were very uh, instrumental in composing a holistic appreciation of this phenomenon. With apologies, this study is grossly handicapped for it was conducted at the height of the quarantine period in the Philippines from March 15 until May 31. As an academic practice, the actual fieldwork documentation should have been undertaken a lot longer period. Unfortunately, documentation was only through virtual television videos 
online articles, some interviews through mobile phones. The Cordillera region of Northern Philippines never experienced the onslaught of colonization in Philippine history. This has ensured integrity of their knowledge system and the holistic practice of their tradition that endures until today. This region nestles the World Heritage Site of the Ifugao Rice Terraces, whose attributes are also shared more or less by adjacent communities like the Bontox in the mountain province. The Ifugao's Hudhud chant and the Punuk, a tagging ritual shared with Korea, Cambodia, and Vietnam, have been recognized in the representative list of ICH for safeguarding and promotion. The mountain province, with Bontok as its capital, comprises the Cordillera with other provinces like the Benguet, Ifugao, Kalinga, Payao, and Abra. Topographically mountainous and historically impenetrable, this is 400 kilometers away from Manila. Living heritage entangles in the daily lives of the people of Bontok. Compulsory village confinement is invoked in the mountain province. It has many terminologies. It could be called the Er, Tengao, Hongao, Sidei, in different ethnolinguistic groups within the mountain province. In the Ipugao province, it's called Tungo or Tungao. In Kalinga, it's called Ngilin. So you can just imagine the permutations of this terminology and the maturity of how this has been practiced. The Er Tengao has many contexts. So in the Feasts of Merit, one anthropologist Creel Brett chronicled her immersive anthropology diary in 1972. Chuno refers to elaborate feast of merit among the Bon Toks. The first three days of the Chuno was the Sarog, where elders declared the community and no one was allowed to leave the village or work in the fields. Activities were concentrated in the house of the head couple where a series of rituals were performed. The last three days of the Chuno were also declared at the air. Accordingly, these were the rituals. There was the Er Nanwarawar. This is the removal of the wooden structures in the festival. There was a Patay ceremony, sacrifice done at the sacred tree by the Puma Patay. And Chernas, this is a ritual bathing at the sacred spring called Toche and at the Er and Tengao. All members of the community were again invited for breakfast and lunch. Another context is the agricultural cycle. The Er is integral to the agricultural cycle of the Cordillerans. This compulsory rest day respects natural forces to settle and elders to read auspicious omens for the activity. All irrigation activities that synchronize agricultural activities are regulated by the Te'er. When the Te'er is decided, the young boys shout announcement that no one should work in the fields for the next two days. That depends on the interpretation of omens received by reading the bile sack of the chicken. The air marks one set of agricultural activity and transmits and transforms on set to another. The air gives farmers time to decide on work allocations among household members as well as assess available resources. Compulsory rest days physical from heavy labor, which arrests physical exhaustion. The air in pestilence. The air is also resorted to during critical environmental constraints particularly the spread of sickness and pestilence. When rice plants are infested with plant diseases, the area is quarantined. Rest day is imposed in all villages by the Council of Elders. Farmers are not allowed to go to their palm fields, leave the village, or else they get fined for infraction. This is a preventive measure to avoid transferring the pests to the rice fields in other localities. This is also a means to gather the focus attention of community on critical issues and conflict that affect the general welfare. The imposition of the air was on an occasion to call the gathering of villagers to witness the litigation of two cases. One case was concerned with the burning of the mountainside and the other concerned the violation of water rotation rules. The contemporary context of Tiaren Tingao is the COVID-19 pandemic. Totally caught unaware in the first quarter of 2020, the whole world panicked with fear and uncertainty on the new coronavirus that emerged from Wuhan, China. On March 15, the president declared a two-month lockdown on the entire country. On March 25, he signed into law the Bayanihan Heal as One Act, which granted him special powers and enjoined the local government to play an active role in the disease prevention. With the lockdown, 
Various mayors embarked on innovative programs to sustain their communities. Some mayors resorted to the following. They utilized technology using drones to disinfect inaccessible areas. Others established a fully equipped testing center to assess the contamination of their whole city. While one mayor provided a ship as a, an alternative hospital for the infected individuals. In Bontok, the governor invoked the support of the community and the wisdom of traditional elders for their quarantine protocols. Traditionally, traditional leaders put high priority to public welfare, emphasizing social impact on decisions and actions in local governance. According to the governor, Lakwasan, as indigenous peoples, we listen to the bearers of indigenous wisdom. It has kept our people safe and strong since time immemorial. On March 30, with the rampage for food relief, the mayor of Saranga in Mountain Province surprisingly declared his local government would not get any relief food pack from the national agency. Instead, he requested that this be given to more needy areas in the whole country. The air in Tingao the Mountain Province was expressed in various uh, practices or various tangible elements. During COVID-19, one area in the mountain province conducted the air with the offering of a chicken with salted meat called changte. After the ritual, the elders put or hung cut clappings, a plant which the part of the guava family on trees and other strategic places. In some areas, a bundle of grass tied loosely with a knot is placed at the entry point of communities to serve as a taboo sign of not to enter. In the bigger towns of the mountain province, harabao cows, horns were displayed or hung to ward off the bad spirits of the COVID-19 pandemic. Rituals were practiced in different levels of society. Individual houses practiced the sinet, the burning of the fire at the back of their houses. In Sagada town, the elders performed the sede. They invoked Lumawig, the supreme being, to protect the town from diseases. In Bontok, a revered Shangar Fakat performed the Manangte, a ritual which involved divining omens from the internal organs of the chicken. A fire was kept burning for several days as protective charm against the virus. I'd like to share with you a video of how the air was expressed in the mountain province. Karaniwang mga pulis ang nagsisilbing kalabay sa mga kalsada ngayong ipinatutupad ang enhanced community quarantine. Pero sa bayan ng Bisaw at Boko Mountain Province, bukod sa pulis, eggshells ang bantay sa mga kalsada. The baking of the eggs, the chicken eggs, the shell are placed in a stick which is used for the signage, for the signage installed in the different entry points to the community. Nagpapahiwatig ito na bawal pumasok o lumabas sa lugar na iyon. Dinadasalan ang mga itlog sa pamamagitan ng ritual na tinatawag nilang tulot di angit. This is performed when health epidemics, which we term as angit, such as diarrhea, measles, influenza, and this coronavirus exists in the community. Sa bayan naman ng buntok, Tikkem o isang uri ng puno ang ginagamit bilang pangharang sa kalsada. Pinabasbasan ng tikkem sa ritual na tinatawag nilang changtoy o proteksyon mula sa malubhang sakit. Nagaalay ang mga elder ng native na manok at iniluluto ito kasama ng salted meat. Hindi pa nila na uh, awanti hospital, awanti doctors, awanti uh, nurses. Ayon sa gobernador, ganito ang ginagawa ng kanilang mga ninuno noon. At naniniwala sila na mabisa pa rin ang pagsasagawa ng ritual para makaiwas sa sakit. This provides you more or less an idea of how they were able to practice their intangible cultural heritage, particularly in this context of COVID-19. The recent statistics with regards to the mountain province as of June 15, this showed that there is still no zero, there is still zero COVID case in the whole mountain province. The reaction and reception of the Cordillerans to counter the COVID-19 pandemic were supportive and cooperative. Their inherent values made them survive this COVID-19 pandemic. Some of these values were actually the resilience. They were able to adopt to any situation and they just had to revive their the air tradition to fit in this new situation.
like their ancestors, they lived under their means, they were very mindful of others, and they tried to save for the rainy day and think of the future. They practiced their bayanihan or cooperation religiously, particularly in times of calamities. They respect the wisdom, the laws of their elders, and they're very pragmatic and practical. All these values resonate their respect for the environment and their food security. According to a seasoned physician on indigenous healthcare system, the rationale and value of this tradition is because common sense dictates we continue these rituals. These are not mere superstitious beliefs. They are their mechanisms for safety, peace, and order. In conclusion, I'd like to express living traditions are powerful sources of community stability. The context of COVID-19 pandemic proves that with a disease that is unseen and the future that is uncertain, only heritage and the past are definite. The LGU's mechanism, hospital infrastructure, healthcare system, education of the people are still far from ideal. The living tradition dictates the value of the Eren Tingao, the compulsory rest for people in the environment to force everyone and everything to stop, to regain the spirit and the stamina into the next phase of life. Living heritage is a life source. It's a life force of the community for stability and sustainability. With that, I'd like to thank all my sources in this very short period and maraming maraming salamat.